Welcome to SLC Fanboys, three guys who love Star Wars, comic books, gaming, movies, and fangirls. Adam Thomas, self-appointed Starfleet captain and Cylon sympathizer. Andy Farnsworth, comic book Jedi and George Lucas apologist. Tyson Webb, Comic-Con moderator and amateur Sith. These are the SLC Fanboys. SLC Fanboys, Andy Farnsworth here with Jeff Bennett, voice actor. You might remember him from other such roles as... Johnny Bravo. Our Kowalski. Hey, Skipper, why did you cancel our cartoon? Wait, that was Dexter's dad, too. I don't know who I am. Thanks. Awesome. He is literally the voice of my living room because <laughs> as I was looking over some of the voices that you do, not only do you voice people in shows that I watched, like right. all the Batman, the Superman, the Justice League, the Spider-Man, but, and my twins will be very thrilled to hear this, they're almost four. Wow. They love Sophia the First and Elena of Avalor. Oh, and honestly, cool. of all the ones that I was scrolling you've through, heard me in that, huh? the one I jumped on was, oh my gosh, Elena of Avalor. <laughs> That's I funny. bet you didn't expect that. No, I did not. That's, a, that's good. You, you kind of got me. You kind of got me with that one. I do a, a character called Twitch on, on uh, I think that's Elena, or is that Sophia? No, on Elena, you're King, you're king uh, Raul, Lar. I am King Lar, yeah. <laughs> he laughs like this a lot. Oh, yeah. And he eats a lot of candies. And then on Sophia, you are the, what are you on Sophia? Twitch. You're Twitch. Oh, right, right, right. right. Is it Twitch? Twi yeah. You're because the bad he's guy. he's kind of a new character. And he actually started out as a very light Donald Trump. You have to say, that's how he started doing. And we had to go back and redo them all because they said, no, it was getting too creepy. <laughs> and probably too dead on. So then I had to sort of change it over to uh, sort of a, a Bowery Boys kind of guy, like the uh, old time kind of New Yorkie boys. It was fun. That is, that is amazing how quickly you can switch to. You voice so many characters. How do you keep track of them in your head? I really, I don't know. I've got a, I've got a little file, little file, little vocal file, and I go just. Okay, I got it. Do you ever go back and listen to your old stuff to kind of get you back in the mindset? Uh, you know, I very rarely watch it's any of the old stuff. Although occasionally I will see like a Dexter's Lab. I'd say about a month ago, I was watching, I was watching Dexter's Lab. And I actually started laughing out loud because I was like, ah, that really was a funny episode. You know, and it's, and it was so interesting for its time, like all the quick cuts and everything. It was kind of different for that time, you know? It's what regular TV essentially adopted. Right, right. And then they went in a whole new place with some of these new shows, you know? And then CG, I mean, all of that went crazy. Uh, which was great with the uh, penguins, you know, seeing that for the first time was so cool. But um, yeah, it is one of those things where I watch them occasionally and I'll just go, wow, that, you know, like a Johnny Bravo episode and go, uh, I mean, I love the Adam West episode is still <laughs> my favorite because I laughed so hard working with him that I thought I actually wasn't going to be able to continue the this, <laughs> this session because, you know, usually I'm, I'm pretty professional about it and I do the stuff and and get the jokes out and everything, you know, but he was so seriously mocking himself while he was doing his part that I couldn't, I couldn't function, like as a normal working voiceover actor. And I was like, tears were coming down my face because he kept saying, Johnny, let's <laughs> go find your mama. And I was, that was the thing. I just could not hold it together. You know, they were like, Jeff, come on, be a pro. What's wrong with you? They weren't laughing too? Oh, they were laughing too. They were laughing. So, you've done, have you done any video games too? Or, no, you have, you have. In fact, you've I, been in some of the uh, Lego have, video and games. I did uh, Darth Revan for, I mean, I've, I've done right. some of the That's Star right. Wars stuff and, and uh, the, uh, the, the, the not so old Republic, the kind of old Republic, one of those. <laughs> I, was, I was in one of those. The medium Republic, the Democratic medium. Republic. No, you're in one of those right now. Yes, I think so. I think so, yes. So, um, oh shoot, I had, oh it was about Johnny Bravo. So I came to the Johnny Bravo party like a year late. And my brother was the oh, one okay. who had discovered this originally. And I was out of the country, I came back. Right. And he's like, oh you gotta watch this. I was like, what is it? He's like, uh, it's kind of like if Elvis took steroids and worked at Venice Beach. That's really good. That's exactly what Robin Williams said. I, one night, it was funny, I was, 
I was watching, it was Letterman or something, and, he had, and they were talking about kids. They were talking about raising kids. And he goes, oh, you ever watch Johnny Bravo? And Letterman was like, N uh, no, no, I don't think I've seen it. What is Johnny Bravo? And he said, oh, yeah, he's like, Elvis on steroids. He was like, ooh, pretty mama. And he started doing, you know, and I was thinking. He was doing you, doing he Johnny was Bravo? Doing, and I was like, oh, man, I must have made it. I must have made it, because if Robin Williams was doing his impression of my, of my character done by me, I was, I'm, I'm happy. That's the I highest form now. of flattery. I can die. That's the genie. <laughs> yeah. And Mork and all the other stuff, but. Right. How right. did you get into voice work? Like what, is it like a snowball? Because you know, I look at a lot of voice actor credits and they have one and then all of a sudden, boom, it like becomes a huge thing. Yeah, well, you know, I think at that time, it's probably still true that, you know, there's, there's only so many directors. And so, when I started working well, on a, a couple of shows, yeah, it's usually four, five, or six directors. You know, they'll, they'll each have four, or five, or six projects, so uh, they get wind of the new talent, and they say, like, where did this Jeff Bennett guy come from? You know, was, uh, well, maybe I'll use him in my show, and we'll see how it goes. And that's how it snowballs. At least back in the day, I was doing, you know, I started out doing uh, James Bond Jr., Right. That was like one of that my. Was that was my when. first series with Corey Burton as as you know. Uh, that was like early nineties, wasn't it? What an immensely talented guy he is. Uh, and we had a blast on that show. Yeah, that was that was like ninety one, ninety two, or something, you know. And and then Batman and Animaniacs all came right after that, and uh, Bonkers and all those things. So it was basically like three or four directors at that time that we were working for the same people all the time. Now, which Animaniac were you? I wasn't any of them. Oh, so who were you? Because I, what I want to tell you about my favorite episode, and it didn't actually feature any of the Animaniacs. Oh, well, I was all the freaks. I played various freakadelics that came in, like Christopher Walken. I was going to say. Who was Christopher Robin in The Brainy and the Pooh. <laughs> and they were like, uh, thank you very much, Christopher Robin. Sure, of course, Pooh, any time. He was that I wish guy. Could do that. You know, and, I can... and then I played uh, the Dennis Hopper parts, like okay. like that kind of thing. Like, oh, you're the cute one. Don't use your cuteness on me, weird man, freaking me out, man. He was that guy. So I was. Uh, I always played the freaks. What's the most characters you've ever played in a single episode or a single movie? The most characters you voiced in one particular. That's a good question. I you know at at one. <laughs> At one point, a uh, director I was working with, uh, Jamie Thomason, also a great, talented guy. Um, I did Lady and the Tramp part two. I uh, think it was part two. And then we re went back and revoiced some stuff in Lady and the Tramp one when they reissued it. Really? But I was like, I was like all the dogs in one of the scenes. And he goes, he goes, that's, uh, and that's Jeff Bennett. And he's talking to Jeff Bennett. Oh, and that's Jeff Bennett that just came in. Oh, and that's Jeff Bennett. I was like, okay, stop. <laughs> so you voiced so ten cool. dogs in the same scene. Yeah, I was doing the Scottish dog and the and and the bloodhound who's always looking for the trail, you know, and uh, and then I was Tramp. That was like Jimmy Stewart. And, and it was a little, and it was a little Jimmy. Yeah, there's a little Jimmy in there. Uh, yeah, that was, you know, I we're talking about stuff we grew up on. I grew up watching. Uh, Rich Little and learning mm, yeah. from him, you know, like watching his show and going, wow, this guy just did like 40 voices in, in five minutes, you know, I, I wish I could, I'd like to work on something like that. And so I started working on my impressions of like his impressions and that's how, you know, you learn to do those because sometimes when you hear the actual person, it doesn't sink through, but if it's like a stand-up guy, like, uh, um, What's his name? The stand-up guy that did—I I forgot his name—who uh, did, who was on SNL, who did Walken. That was the first time that I kind of went, "Oh." Well, Kevin Spacey did the best Walken of all. But are you thinking of? Uh, oh, right, the guy from the '80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. not Billy, not Billy Crystal. I'm John, John, uh, something, I, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. But anyway, well, Rich was, Little was on Saturday Night Live in the '80s. Rich Little was there. So, I, but I would watch him and I'd go, wow, that, that's real. Okay, that's how you do Jimmy. So you talk like that, and then you go, okay, and then you work on. And I, I, I just work on different things all the time then. So I, when I read to my kids, I read them the Harry Potter books, and I try to ape all the voices, oh, yeah. in British accents, no less, that, <laughs> that I copy, you know, essentially from the movies. Oh, yeah. 
And you know, for Love people, it's, it's harder to do than people might think. Oh yeah, you just listen to him for a second. It's way harder than people think because eventually, as you're trying to read the dialogue, you like you have to think how would they say that as opposed to just right. spitting and you it come out. out of it. And you could, then you come out of it. That's that. And it's hard to go back. Like I have a hard time switching between Hagrid and Snape. I and mean, anyone that have kind of similar, I'd always forget what I was doing for Ron. Right. And it would just right. turn into a real bad Cockney accent. Yeah, you know, and you get to the point where, you know, when you're reading to your kids as a, as a voiceover guy, you know, I, I do uh, remember a, a couple times when my daughter was like, Dad, could you just read the story as yourself? <laughs> I, I believe that. You don't have to do all the voices, okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, honey. I'm very sorry. Daddy will just read it as daddy. <laughs> and then she's like, I forgot what daddy's voice is. Yeah, yeah, you can go back to the voices. You're really boring. <laughs> Actually, my kids, when I tried to read it straight, no, dad, do the voices. <laughs> and especially when we're going in the car and I'm sitting in the front and I have to kind of turn my head back and then I got to yell it out so they can hear me. Quiet through our one, two, two, father. Oh dear. He's harder to do than you think. You, have, you almost have to swallow your voice. And you have to talk through gritted teeth. Yes, Mr. Course. Potter. And, and also through the nose oh, at the so same time. <laughs> but that's why you're the pro and I'm the amateur. Well, I've studied. I've studied. You've actually done studying? I have. I stud I just watch, you know, I watch way too much television and, you know, my parents got on me about that. And I'm like, Mom, Dad, I'm doing research. So tell me really quickly about when you're voicing something, how often do you get to work opposite the other stars or the other voice actors? Or is it just dialogue recording, you record your spot, your portion by itself? I mean, uh, you're, it talking about, you're talking about Adam West, so... Like, obviously, you were in the room with him when he was doing his lines, but how yeah. often is that? Well, the funny thing is, like, lately, I think because there's so many projects going on, so everybody's schedule is so different that a lot of times we do end up doing it individually. But I would say, like, um, usually at the DreamWorks recordings, uh, they try to get they try to get everybody together, like on King Julian, All Hail King Julian. We, uh, we usually record together, and at most of the Nickelodeon shows, we record together. Uh, but you know, it, it varies. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff I've done by myself that I thought, wow, I, I wish I would have had the reading from the actor because it might have changed my reading. You know, and occasionally they'll give you uh, the line reading if they had it already that somebody gave to to help you out. Because I would have thought that was important, especially when you're talking about things like comedy. So much is timing, and and when you can match the energy of the other guy or whatever. I, I mean, obviously that's what the director's trying to get out of you anyway. But right. But right. and sometimes they can screw up the timing with, with doing individual only. I, I know a lot of the directors really would prefer it if we're all there at the same time because then you do get the real, the real timing and what, you know, and you think, oh wow, I never would have thought you would say the line that way. That's really cool. So I'm, I, I would do it in a totally different way. Who, who's the, who's the, who makes you fanboy out? Wow, who makes me fanboy out? Well, Adam West did, of, of course. Uh, I met Ed Asner uh, doing Gargoyles, and that was a big, because I grew up in the 70s watching all those great Mary sitcoms. Mary Tyler Moore. Mary Tyler Moore, so when I met him, I was like, he's sitting right next to me, and you know, it was like the first day of Gargoyles, and I was like, I, uh, I just have to say, Mr. Asner, oh, I love you. <laughs> he was like, shut up. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure they're not big fans of that. Right, right, right. It was like, he, he knew who I was doing, but, you know, nowadays, it's not going to, they're not going to know, you know. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. Thank I you, really man. appreciate you taking My some pleasure. time for us here at Fanex 2017. And uh, we're, uh, you have a Twitter handle or Facebook handle where people could follow you or anything like I, that? I don't do any of that, but I, I, I should. I should. In the future, I guess I should, I should tweet a lot more. A whole lot more. <laughs> well, it's okay, but we're, we're glad to have you. We'll send it out to as many people as we know. Excellent. Thank Sounds you so good. much, sir. All right.